Today we're going to talk about how to install Manta firmware on the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P. Now there's a couple things I need to point out here because uh, what I'm going to do in two parts being one tutorial and another is first talk about how to load the firmware and then next part two to this will be how to use Octoprint with it. So I have to point out that there's the MCU loading drive here underneath and then over here there's the one for the Raspberry Pi. In this case the Raspberry Pi is a CM4 and it does not have the EMMC module whereas this one does and this one does not. Now there's another version coming out that does have the actual EMMC version but I haven't been able to obtain it just yet. So what I'm going to do is show you how to load Marlin and also bring up a screen so you can see how it works because it's not the same as the normal configuration. So to start with we're going to grab the actual SD card right here and we're going to place this inside our card reader and then place this in the computer. So you might hear a beep. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Marlin website. So I'll show you that right now. So over here we're on the Marlin website. Now it's not in this particular version being 2.1.2. The next version is probably going to be 2.1.3 but that's just a guesstimate. So I'm going to click here to go to downloads and currently it's in bug fix which means that this is the development branch this is not normally what you should use and I don't advise you using it it will eventually end up in here when this number increments so I've already downloaded it but you can click here to do a download which I've already done so I'll show you that real quick so over here I have the bug fix. This is when I pulled it being 425.23. It's always updating daily, possibly hourly. And so I just right clicked and then I said extract all. But currently it's already extracted. So I'm going to go over to VS Code. Or actually I'll show you this real quick. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to right click and show you this. Now this may take a few moments to actually extract. But once it's extracted, what we can do is actually work with it from a fresh copy of what we originally had open. So this is going to take a few seconds to actually extract. Probably about 60 according to their estimate. Now 45. So we'll give that a second to actually extract. And... I'll show you a little bit about where you can find more information on this board. If you go over to the GitHub for Marlin, or excuse me, not Marlin, for Big Tree Tech, and you click on Repositories, and then you click over here and type Manta, what will happen is you'll come right to the Manta manual. Now what we're doing currently is not in the manual. So this is going to be new material maybe they'll add in the future. So let me click over here. I'm going to then click on the Explorer open folder. And I'm going to then find the downloads folder over here. Open this up. And inside here I'm in bug fix. Then bug fix again. So I'll select the folder. So it's going to bring up your regular environment. Now there's a couple other things I want to point out. Um, I had extreme trouble getting this to actually compile and load correctly. And one of the issues that I had was apparently my version of Platform IO got stale somehow. So I have to thank uh, Keith, or this is Keith. Um, he gave some directions on what you can do to actually solve the problem. So if it doesn't build and load correctly according to what I'm doing here, follow these directions. 
So let's go back over here. What we're going to have to do like normal is go to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. So we're going to search on Manta. And our board is the M8P. I believe it's this one or this one. They're actually the same processor as you can see right here. So I'm going to actually copy this one for the moment. And then I'm going to minimize core and source, go to configuration.h. I'm going to scroll down and find the actual motherboard, which is right here. I'm going to highlight this and paste over it. Now, because we're using a unique serial port in this case, I'm going to have to say negative one like I do with the other 32-bit boards that we load via SD card. And of course, we're going to actually attach a display. So I'm going to go back over and attach the display, and I'll show you that real quick. So on here, the bottom of this, you can see there's an EXP1, hopefully, and an EXP2. So I'm going to grab one of these cords, and I'm going to connect to EXP1. And you have to use the notched connector, which is right here, and slide this in. So once that's in, you want to go to EXP1 on the board and do the notch connector again. And hopefully I'm doing this in the right place. If I'm not, we can always check. So I'm going to do EXP2 over here and do the same thing where I slide it into EXP2 here. So that looks a little messy, I understand. But uh, we're going to see where this goes. So I'm going to power up the board, but I'm not going to use the power supply in this case. I'm going to use the 5 volt jumper that we can turn the board on with. This is only so we can work with the board at 5 volts. When you're using steppers, remove it and use the regular power supply. So I'm going to turn on the actual power to this particular USB now. And you can see the screen does come up. So I'm going to power this back down. And if you're ever looking for the actual processor, I know it's kind of hidden right now, so let me move this over. If you don't know what your processor is, you can read it right here. Or you can look at the sulk screen on your board on the top and the bottom. So let's go back over to the computer and set this up for the RepRap Full Graphics Smart Controller for the actual display. So on the desktop, we're going to search on RepRap. And there's going to be a couple places where this is actually listed. So we're going to search for the next one. So this is not going well. So I'm going to search on full and then underscore graphics. And here we go, RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. So we need to remove the actual comment. Now I'm not going to go in depth into this at the moment. I may do it in future tutorials, but you can enable other things under the category up here, which is I think the, well, it's going to take a second because they've changed it around a little bit. So up here, there's something having to do with the uh, actual display. So as you can see right here, we have LCD support for both the LCD and the SD card. Now, this is actually in English. You can see that you can pick other languages. Down below, there's other things you can change about this, being the LCD style. And there are things throughout this that you can do. But I don't want to go too far into this. Um, there is an SD card issue where you need to go to the advanced configuration in order to point it to the one on the actual display. But for now, we're going to ignore that. So what we need to do now is find our processor real quick. So the processor that I showed you on the board is actually this one right here, which is the STM32. G0B1DE. 
So to find that, to do the build, we have to go to the INI folder. Then we have to find that actual processor, which is down here for the STM32G. And we're going to search with a control F on Manta. And as you can see, this covers a couple of the Mantas. We're looking for the one that's actually for the VE version. So let's see if we can do spacebar M8P. So this looks like we're in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, right click, copy it, and you can see that it's VE right here. Then I'm going to minimize the INI folder, go to the Platform I.O. folder, highlight the Mega 2560 for the default environment or ENDS, and paste it. So now what we'll do is we'll do a clean real quick to clean out anything that might already be in there. And then we're going to click the checkbox to actually build this. Now this may or may not work in your configuration, and like I said before, I would follow the instructions that Keith has given us right here if you have an issue. Now if you see red in here, that means there's a compiler error. There's one of two things you can do. If you see multiple red things, you'll go to the very first one and fix it. Or what I used to do was compile a second time in case something built out of order inside this actual compile. The compile is also called a build. Now yellow is actually just a warning normally, so you can ignore that. If we're successful, it will populate in this folder for the build folder, and you'll see a firmware.bin. You'll probably see a firmware.eif uh, before bin. So I'm going to right click on this, Reveal in File Explorer. Now I already have a drive over here for firmware.cur. That was something that loaded earlier. So that meant that it was successful. So I'm gonna copy this or send this to the actual E drive. So if it's successful, it'll be renamed to this. If you wanna load it on the same type of system with the same configuration, you just rename it back to this. If you want to actually save it as something else to use in the future, rename it. So I'm going to go back over to the actual desktop for a second, pop out the drive, and then I have to locate the actual SD card under here. So this is going to be a little bit of fun. So it's someplace around here. Normally I'd pick the board up, but Hopefully I can do this. Maybe I need tweezers. So, let me see if I can look from the angle. There we go. And we've got it in. So to load this, what we're going to do is, hopefully if we're successful, this is gonna light up and say Marlin. We're using the power with the jumper currently, not the direct power and we're gonna use it off of here. So I'm gonna plug it in. I'm actually gonna power this first and then plug this in. So watch the screen over here and it says Marlin. So we were successful in loading the Marlin firmware. The other way you can check is by powering down the system and checking your drive to see it says firmware.cur. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe and I have to thank Big Tree Tech for providing me the board to actually do this. My patrons on both PayPal and on, uh, what is it, uh, Patreon, as well as Keith for the directions to get around the build issue, being this is Keith. So everyone, thank you very much. Take care, and I'll talk to you later.